So hello everyone, uh, my name is Jay Otterwell. Um, I'm going to start with introducing here with us uh, artist Emma Coop, also previously known as Emma Talkington. And with me as well in the conversation is co-creator and collaborator Jason Gillen. Uh, so Emma Coop studied her MA Fine Art at Ch Chelsea College of Arts in 2004. Uh, she is an artist who always seems to be venturing somewhere else. Her work uh, centres around a deep affinity with nature and the elements. Uh, however, having lived in cities all of her life, her connection with nature is not based on a daily relationship, but a fleeting encounters and memories. Primed by romanticism, nature is imbued and uh, with a metaphor, sorry, for emotional states, and this connection is highlighted in the title of her work. Her recent exhibitions include the Ferns Open, the Ferns Art Gallery and Hall, and of course the upcoming Drawing Beyond the Self exhibition from the 2nd to the 24th of October at Air Gallery Manchester, uh, centering around the idea of expanded drawing. So uh, I'm just going to pass you on to Jason Gillen now, and he's going to kickstart the question for us. Okay. Hi, Emma. Hi. So yeah, just to, to get going, um, just wanted to ask you about your material choices for the work Horizon. Um, it's quite an unusual choice of materials with the crayon and the sort of foil survival blankets. So could you sort of tell us a bit more about the context, how the work came about, and, and why this interesting choice of materials. Okay, so um, the Horizon series has got two pieces in it which um, use um, survival blankets as a kind of material to draw into. Um, there's the, the piece that's titled Supports, which is in the show in Air Gallery. And the first piece I made was called Layton, and that featured a full scale um, survival blanket. I was just at the time I was just looking at experimenting drawing on different things in the studio and um, a friend gave me this survival blanket which was just immediately fascinating because it was like this big folded up really super shiny and perfect and and folded it had this great kind of like sort of like grid of folds across it and I was like I need to do something with this but um, I wasn't quite sure what I couldn't get anything to draw on it at first because it was so sort of shiny so I, I took it to the sea thinking I'd do a series of photographs with it, um, but um, it, which sounded like, I thought the idea was okay, but it, it just didn't really work. But what was nice was that, because it was floating on the sea, was it started to crumple kind of with the undulations of the actual waves. It connected directly with the nature. So all that kind of like pristine shop bought kind of grid kind of fell out of it. It got its own texture. You know, it was coated in salt water. Um, and yeah, it just took on a different kind of life. It sounded different afterwards, it was weird. So then obviously I dried it all off, got it back to the studio and um, I had some lithographic crayons and I tried using those on them and it worked. It just sits on the top. And then what's kind of quite um, ironic about lithographic crayon is that it dissolves in water. So whenever I have to send this piece off, I'm like, don't let it get wet because it will just dissolve, you know. But um, yeah, so I was really happy with the way that worked out. And obviously the idea of a uh, survival blanket having a connection to, you know, danger basically the elements and you know surviving uh, overcoming um and the and the, obviously the refugee crisis as well because one of the things i like about the sea is that connection between its kind of lure and its adventure and its kind of hopes and escapism but also the danger you know there's a duality with it and obviously that's obviously must be you know that's you know ongoing thing the crisis so That's that's very really interesting. It, it seems like you have a, a an interesting connection with the the sea. But I wanted to ask you uh, as well. Like uh, your your drawings kind of remind me a bit of uh, uh, I think I'm pronouncing this right, Vijay Clemens' work and her intricate drawings of the sea as subject matter. Um, although her work is small pencil marks and you know of waves in the night sky and stars, has this been a has has her work been an influence on you at all or are there other influences that sort of like feel to that instead? Um I really like her work. Um it's, it's beautiful. You know, I love obviously the fact that she's obviously got that 
connection with nature and subject matter and a similar subject matter that I have and you know um yeah she's a brilliant artist I love um and she's amazing um, she must have a lot of patience <laughs> because I think that hers might be more kind of her work might be far more um scientifically accurate probably than my own where I can only kind of like copy a photograph so much before I go off doing my own thing but um yeah no um I love her work it's great um I think probably she uses like um a technical pencil you know and hers is probably quite pristine whereas I just tend to use like these great big kind of like graphite I don't know if you can see that chunky sticks maybe like that so they're, they're really chunky and sort of mark making is very different. It's very kind of, so there's that difference. Um, the artist that I like the most is um, Bastian Adder, who obviously has that connection to the sea and to nature. But I also love the way that he's got a kind of like an absurd, I can't speak, absurdity in his work and a kind of melancholy, but there's also a humour it's like, you know, he was there, you know, right in the middle of all the conceptual movement. And yet his work was incredibly emotional. So, and I love that balance and the kind of slight of gesture in his work. So, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, so just thinking about time in your work, um, there's quite an intimate act of drawing. Um, you talk about your experiences of nature. Um, how how do you sort of use you, you also talk about drawing being a way of slowing things down so um, how do you sort of describe time in your practice if that's if you're able to time um, it's interesting when you say that it makes me think back to work I was making on my well actually I say um, I was going to say MA but actually back in doing the BA but even though the work was very different it's very conceptual at the time um, it was very painstaking there's always been this kind of endurance element um, I'm not quite sure why, but that must be a thing. Um, in terms of time, I suppose like the work starts off with a kind of um, an experience in nature. Maybe, maybe there's a photograph that goes with it or a photograph that reminds me of the, the moment that I'm trying to create. So, so yeah, I'm thinking of a specific time and I'm trying to recreate it in the studio, but then just the process that takes so long to do it, that it becomes this very immersive kind of thing. So there's, there's, there's two senses of time going on, do you know what I mean, in a weird way. Um, people always ask how long it takes to make something. I don't even know because um, I just do bits here and there. And I say bits here and there, I mean, I'll do hours here and there. I don't do solid days, wish I had enough time to, but, um, so time just gets lost in the process of making it. Um, yeah. And it, it, can be, it can be very immersive. Like when I, when I finish, you know, if I've like downed my pencil for a day, I'll be like, oh, what time is it? And I'll, I'll have lost track of everything. Do you know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you, do you have, what do you find that when you're, cause they're obviously quite large scale, do you almost feel like you're reliving your experience in nature? Is, is there a sense of, you know, you've got a photo to work from, but do you, does the immersion take you back to the experience a bit? Is there an element of that, a memory sort of um, aspect? Or? Not, not so much that I feel that I'm there, but more that I am trying to do justice to um, a memory, does that make sense? Um, uh, to, to the experience of it. And it's constantly, it's a very frustrating experience making art I, for me. Sometimes I don't know why I do it. <laughs> it really drives me mad because I suppose, um, yeah, it can be quite frustrating because obviously nothing's as good as the original moment. Do you know what I mean? Everything afterwards is is just a, like trying to get there. And then I suppose I just hope that through the process, the work gets it to a place, gets itself to a place where it becomes its own thing. And then it's almost like a relief, like it can then let go of that original concept because it's now its own thing. Does that make sense? So not as not as relaxing as a strolling out with nature when you come to no, make no, 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 it drives me mad. <laughs> yeah. um, I also wanted to ask you, Emma, how, uh, what are your methodologies like in the studio? How does the the art making and the process of your work take place in the studio? How do, how does that work for you? Do you have a clear idea of what you're going to do, or is it kind of 
suddenly you're like, sort of, I don't know, working as you go, or is it one thing that relates to another? How do you, how does it work come about for you? Um, it is kind of like, at the moment I'm limited a bit with space because I've not got a studio, so I'm working at home. So I would really like to be able to have lots of different things on the go. But because the work's quite large scale, I've only really got room to do one piece at a time. And that seems to kind of like tie in a little bit with my kind of conceptual background and kind of video making background where you set yourself out to do something and then and you've got your beginning and your end and what happens in the middle is the artwork, you know. Only that's not what I'm doing now, but it's still when you've got that big piece of paper and you're like, oh, I've got to start this thing. And this is kind of overwhelming panic, you know, procrastinating and stalling. And then just kind of make myself make a start on it. And then, you know, it's quite anxious for the beginning part of it, I find. And then somewhere in the middle, I'll kind of relax into it and be like, Phew. I can see it's kind of <laughs> turning into something that I can bear to stand the so and bear the sight of but um yeah i don't know so it's, it tends to be wandering at a time it tends to be um a specific um moment it's always got to be a memory of, of me going somewhere it's never kind of someone else's picture or someone else a place i've not been to it's always a place um but it's the starting point and and then this kind of stupid journey i take myself on of trying to kind of recreate it <laughs> But again, it can take, sometimes I'll be working quite quickly uh, and I might make a piece of work in two weeks or sometimes it might be taking a lot longer and it will take me four months. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to, to, to think, does the, uh, does the artwork change at home a little bit or is it, is it kind of similar to the studio? Because I'm sure many artists especially during lockdown, working at home. And I felt there was a change in my work due to that a little bit. Do you feel like it changes or does it stay the same? I think I've taken more risks working at home. I think the thing, the thing as well is that um, I spend a lot of time looking at it, you know, and for me, it's like I'm my own worst critic. I have to be able to, to, to look at it. If I can't look at it, it drives me mad. But, um, so when I was at the studio, I think I was taking less risks. I think I was working more efficiently with my time, should we say. But um, I think that the difference being working at home has been um, my mood, because there's this thing that um, Maggie Hambling said that I really like, which is something like, just something like you've got to have, I'm slightly misquoting, like a relationship with your artwork where, you know, if you're in love, you, you feel love. And basically, if you're having a good day, you take it to your artwork. If you're having a bad day, you take it to your artwork. But you know, this kind of thing. But my experience of living with my artwork every day is that, um, yes, I do take everything to it, but it also means that if I get in a bad mood, that's not good. But you know, if it's driving me mad, basically more work has been destroyed since working, living with it in the studio <laughs> because I'm probably destroying about 50% of the work that I'm making now <laughs> which is not necessarily good but that's what's happening <laughs> having a sort of a, a little bit of a domestic with with your work I guess yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, you know. <laughs> you, um, ask you about so in the the horizon series the supports work obviously there's a fan that you've positioned and I think there's a kind of brick-like object that you've actually done some drawing on um, yes. and interesting you know when we're talking about expanded drawing interesting elements that kind of bring it into this um, installation um, you know and sculptural also movement and you know has a different um, thing going on with the with the fan that's blowing the work how did that come about could you tell us a bit about that yes yeah, so when I'd made this first piece using the survival blanket later um, the thing I hadn't kind of managed to play with, but I was still thinking about a lot was just kind of just how fragile it was, the sound it was making when it moved, um, and the fact that it would blow away really quickly and always needed weighting down and things like that. And so that was why I went back to do working with the foil, specifically to play around with those aspects of it. So, um, so the brick, I've actually got the brick here, because I need to post it to the gallery. But, um, so the brick was from the, the Thames, um, 
I saw it quite, I quite like beach combing on the side of a Thames. So basically, I don't know if you can see it, it's got drawn marks and it's quite subtle. It's basically an old London brick, it says L-E on it. Um, and I've drawn into it because I kind of, well, that was the, basically the way, so the, the survival blanket falls off a shelf and is weighted into position with that brick. And I wanted to kind of really, um, sol not solidify, but really kind of exaggerate the relationship between those two things. So that's why I drew the kind of wave motif onto the brick to mimic what was happening with the drawn surface as I've drawn a C onto the, the foil blanket again. And then there's um, an electric fan that goes on the floor that oscillates um, and basically um, it just, every time it sort of turns around, the, the blanket kind of just shifts and it makes this crumple sound, which is just in a kind of absurd, kind of like akin to nature. And I just sort of quite like the idea that, you know, I'm in my, you know, little London, you know, bubble and I'm trying to kind of recreate this this moment and it's the whole thing so absurd so I kind of just went with that basically but it's cool supports because I like the way that each free element you know needs the other you talk about um you, you've mentioned absurdity a few times which is really interesting is that is that a sort of um deliberate conscious choice or is that something that seems to kind of emerge from the work um that you're aware of I literally only just realized it <laughs> okay. so yeah no I was just in the conversation thinking wait a minute that's just what I said about um Bassi and Ada. so yeah maybe this is something to explore further yeah I, I don't know I don't know why I was drawn to that really I don't know I think I need to think about that <laughs> um I was gonna ask you uh so something you mentioned earlier and you uh it was an artist. Was it Bas Basian Abba? Was that as I you say? Basian Abba is a yeah. conceptualist. Yeah, and it was, I've looked into him a little bit, and it's quite interesting. Um, the fact that he has this affinity with the sea as well. Didn't he disappear at the sea? Yeah, this yeah. is the, this is the big drama. He did this mm. um, piece of work in search of a miraculous, which had um, three parts to it, and the final part was supposed to be him sailing from, I can't remember exactly where, but from America back to Holland um, in this tiny little one-man sailing dinghy. And he had a brass band playing sea shanty to wave him off. And the, the, there was a kind of invite to the show was, you know, a picture of him in the boat. And, and yeah, very sadly, he was just, he never arrived at his destination. And it's presumed he was lost at sea. His boat was found. I don't know how much later, but his boat was eventually found. His body was never recovered. But um, so, yeah, it was a tragedy, you know. I just, I just thought it was quite interesting because it's the absurd and his ideas are quite yeah. outlandish like that. And then you mentioned earlier about how the sea has this kind of this like relationship to, to, to all of us, really, in different ways. Like there's less hope, there's crisis. It has yeah. this real poetic feel to it where like, it, it's, it consumes most of the earth and it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and a lot of people wonder whether or not because I definitely agree I mean that is the thing to see is um, you know it, it you just have to respect it for what it is it's just an element it can be it can be everything and he would have known that because he was a sailor he's a very experienced sailor so he wasn't a lot of people say he wasn't presuming to get you know it wasn't like a completely absurd thing to do he'd sailed the journey before, never in such a small boat, I don't think. But um, but yeah, I mean, it sort of it's it's kind of terrifying and alluring at the same time. I think that's something I quite like in the work: the idea of being drawn to something that might be scary. Do you know what I mean? I guess the the ocean has that as a sort of metaphor: the idea of being sort of swept out, um, you know, the tide. Um, flowing in and out. Um, another aspect of your, aside from drawing, but you might see it, or perhaps see it in a kind of uh, expanded drawing sense, but you some often, well, not often, but you sometimes work with film. Um, yeah, how does that, how did that come about? And how does that, is it a similar set of ideas that you're exploring? And how do you see it in relation to drawing? Yeah, I, mean, I first started working with film when I was doing um, my PGDF and then 
Well, actually, no, I did it a little bit on BA, but, but, but it was my main thing. When I was doing my master's, it was all video. Um, but um, the thing with the video was that I found that the videos I was making at the time, they were very conceptually driven. And I was finding that I was enjoying making them, but it was the kind of thing that I made. I mean, this is before I had an iPhone, you know, this is like, I'm like a dinosaur. But um, at the time it was like, there was a real kind of um, sense of having to make an effort to make it. It was a conceptual thing and I'd have to set it up and it'd be a tripod and I was in it, I was quite performative. But um, when I didn't, if, if I was going through a period where um, they, you, I made them for crits or I made them for shows kind of thing, but I didn't make them for myself because they were, they took a lot of prep time, do you know what I mean? And it was like, I wouldn't watch them afterwards. It was like the work was so conceptual, I could imagine it. I enjoyed the ideas. Um, and it was after I had um, children when I was kind of away from the art world for a bit and I had to really start making my own work, but I started doing the drawing. And I was thinking about now, so the videos that I've made since, in a kind of an official sense, are videos that I put into shows. Um, but then I, I take video all the time on my phone. So then I was thinking like, you know, there's a really weird, you know, it's like I work with film and video, film and photography all the time because I'm usually using them as a starting point, but I don't often personally kind of give them credit as being an end point unless I can imagine it within a show. Does that make sense? So I think that's something that I've still not properly, you know, worked out. Does that make sense? I think the main thing for me at the moment that I'm enjoying is this kind of process of making in a physical sense with the drawings. But I still feel, think, do you know what I mean, in a kind of film way. And when I have an excuse to kind of put a video into something, I will do, but it's not, I don't know, it's, yeah. Mm. I hope that answers it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, have you, have you often combined the two in shows or were they quite distinct? They seem like two sort of separate. Um, no, well, I've, yeah. I've, put, I've put drawings and, um, and films in together um, in a couple of group shows, that, or a solo show and a group show as well that I did. And, um, and in some ways I like that context because quite often I think when I have used film in the past, it's been, it's kind of like, I've quite enjoyed the play between different pieces. You know, I really love that about doing a physical show, about seeing how different works work together, uh, especially if it's a solo show, because you just get to just, it, the whole thing becomes one conversation. And I really enjoy that. I think that's probably why I think about film in those contexts, do you know what I mean? Because I think, oh, next to that, this is going to work. Does that make sense? Whereas in a kind of, it's so different when you're making work in studio and you're just doing one thing at a time, or if you're sending it off to a, you know, an open call or something, it's just one thing where it has to exist in its own little bubble. You know, it's, it's very different from when you're doing a, a show and you allow this kind of, I love it, do you know what I mean? That kind of conversation, so, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. I feel like there's always there's a, there's a different lens when it comes to film and camera compared to drawing. I think drawing's quite like has this immediacy to it. It's like it's, it's there with you whilst you're thinking, whereas film and, and camera lenses can be adapted and edited along the way. I was going to ask you about the work that you submitted for the show a little bit and how how where does the two D and the three D play? How where do these objects come from, or how do you feel they sit together? Do you feel they that the, the, the survival banker when it hangs down becomes a physical object or do you still see it as a drawing do you think? Hmm, good one. Um, <laughs> I suppose, I think I probably just don't really label things enough. I don't, it all just blurs in, in, into one in my head. It's not, very, it's not a very high art answer. <laughs> Um, is it a drawing? Is it, I don't, it, to me, it's just, it's just all the work. Just, it is just the work, basically. I don't really see a, dis, a distinction between, I don't know. 
I was, I was, I was just curious. It's just because we're doing an expanded drawing show. Yeah, I'm really sure. curious. Yeah, it's a very relevant question. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but how did you feel then your work being in a, a virtual reality setting? Because oh, that show, yeah, that was quite different. It was very different. It was quite exciting. You know, I felt like you know it's the future. I'm taking part in the future. I mean, it was really interesting. Really just, I think partly as well, because it was lockdown and not been to a gallery for a while or had a show for a while. It was just kind of like really nice just to sort of get to see some art, you know, and to see that conversation I was talking about before, how you can see one person's work next to another and they start to feed off each other. And so I really enjoyed it because I was really missing that in my life. But it doesn't really compare to the physical experience to me. You know, I still like to see things I still it's quite interesting um because I think you guys have only seen my work kind of through images I presume so it's quite weird because um you've not really seen it do you know what I mean? it's kind of weird it, the whole thing's kind of weird and that there's just so much that I could but you get from seeing a physical piece of artwork do you know what I mean like uh, looking at a piece now like the way that the, the light is reflecting on the surface of it is showing all the hand making marks and that's not something I can get across in a photograph very easily does that make sense so and I know if that's happening with my work then I'm sure that's happening with people's work as well you know so you know um so a physical show is always going to be more exciting to me but in a world of no shows I would definitely rather have a virtual show than nothing <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're very glad to actually be able to have the physical show um, so we, we, people get a chance to actually see, see your work in the flesh and all those nuances. Um, one thing that you mentioned a bit was the idea of kind of performance in relation to your films. Do you also see, obviously you work quite a large scale and they're quite immersive works and there's the experience that they're based on. Do you, is there, a, do you see it as a, any kind of a performance in relation to drawing? Is there a... I think... Um... Uh, in some senses, yeah, I suppose in some senses, yeah, because definitely I, you know, I set myself through sometimes, you know, these massive pieces of papers, it feels like I'm setting myself a ridiculous task to kind of colour it all in with something that's like, you know, this big, you know, so the, very back to absurdity again, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, it does some way, in some ways, yes, I know that the process and therefore me doing it, the act of me making it as an artist, you know, there's a performative element to that. I think what I like about these graphite sticks is that they are quite chunky. So instead of it being kind of like small mark making, it is quite kind of like, it is kind of the mark making is going through the body. It's very much me that's going into the work. And yeah, if I'm in, in an angry mood, you, know, you, you see it very differently in the artwork. You know, sometimes I'll be like stabbing at it because I'm in a bad mood or something. And then later on, I'm trying to like, make them not look quite so stabby, do you know what I mean? But it's still there in the drawing, it's still there under the surface, there's lots of layers of mark making going on in it. So yes, there is a kind of performative element in that sense. Um, yeah, but I don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there seems to be something kind of interesting um, in that, you know, like with nature and you mentioned with the ocean that it can be, you know, a calm, Kind of entity but it obviously can be you know dangerous yeah the ideas of survival and it's it's interesting that the mark making seems to reflect that sometimes sometimes maybe it's feels yeah. like a, a stroll through the work and then maybe sometimes it's really yeah. anxious and, and yeah i think that's no you definitely see that in the work in the work in that some of it is very delicate and then other bits are just not at all it, so it is all in there it really is mm -hmm. Um, we've, we've only got 10 minutes left, I think. So, um, is there, is there anything that you wanted to ask us about the show? Emma? is there anything that you're looking forward to seeing the most? Um, what, how, how do you feel about us putting on a, an expanded drawing show? Um, I think it's really exciting and, um, maybe I'll answer this question better this time because yeah, no, it's really exciting to see a drawing show. It's really exciting to see a drawing show in Manchester because that's, you know, Manchester is where I come from originally. And I always love, I think the art scene in Manchester is really exciting and it's really nice because at the time 
when I was making work in Manchester, oh, so I left in 2006, no, 2002. I left in 2002, and at the time, I, you could not imagine there being a drawing show going on. You know, it probably wouldn't have been in London either, to be honest. Um, but so it's really exciting, you know, that drawing is getting that kind of showcase, but, you know, artists in Manchester are still kind of like taking charge and keeping the art world on its toes, you know. And, um, and it's really interesting. It looks like you've got a really good selection of work from different practices. So um, I'm not going to remember all the artists' names because I haven't met them yet. But one of your artists makes work with, car with graphite as an object. Is that right? We've, we've got Lucy, Lucy Crouch that... She makes, yes. Yeah, um, she uses the graphite as a, a sculptural thing in itself. Uh, that sounds really interesting, and so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, this is going to sound really cheesy. I like both your works, so I'm looking forward to seeing those too. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it just be really, really nice to see the whole the whole thing and to see it all relation having in relation and seeing how you hang it as well, seeing what trying to figure out what relations you you two have, you have all been thinking of. You know, it's always kind of like ah, so that's how I think. It's it's just going to be fascinating. I'm really looking forward to it. 